The development you predicted in the Kessner case happened unexpectedly. Please come back immediately. How can it be unexpected if I have predicted it? Poirot, my friend, is that you? <laughs> Poirot, it is I, Book. Poirot, is it truly you, my friend? Book, it is indeed me. What brings you so far from home? A little affair in Syria. An affair of the heart? No, no, a modest affair of recovering stolen artifacts. But now I am summoned home to England and must leave immediately. This evening? You travel on the Orient Express, I hope. I have made no arrangements yet, as I just learned that an emergency has arisen, and I must return to England immediately. Very well. It will be my pleasure to secure you a sleeper on the Orient Express. If the director of the line insists, I accept with pleasure. And we'll dine together, for I too depart this afternoon. We'll have plenty of time to catch up. I'll have the hotel transfer our luggage. Excuse me, sir. You are the director of the line? The Princess Dragomirov would like to know if she may keep her mina in her compartment on the train. Uh, good morning, Princess. It is an honor to welcome you aboard. There is absolutely no problem for your pet. You will ask about his food? Oh, yes. The Princess Dragomirov would like to know if there is food for miners on board. Insects? Uh, small amphibians? Baby rodents? Baby rodents? Uh, of course, Princess. Don't worry. Your bird will be fed as you demand. You there, desk clerk. One moment, sir. Listen to me. Call the police. My train ticket has been stolen. Stolen? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You travel by the Orient Express, monsieur? Arbuthnot. Captain Archibald Arbuthnot. Formerly British Army, now retired. And yes, I'm taking the Orient Express to Paris. But what business is that of yours? My name is Book. I am the director of the line at your service. And perhaps this gentleman could assist you. He is Hercule Poirot. I... oh. Uh, but I must make that train. <laughs> A train ticket. Yesterday I recovered artifacts worth several millions. Please, my friend. It's not just any ticket. It's an Orient Express ticket. Very well, I will investigate. Thank you, Poirot. I will arrange a car to Sirkechi station for us. How do you know your ticket has been stolen, monsieur? I put it on a table in my room. I came down here to breakfast, and when I got back, my ticket was gone, and other things were on the floor, as if they'd been tossed about. Hello, monsieur. I suggest we begin in your room. Will you lead the way?
That was easy. Floor, Captain Arbuthnot? Fourth floor. Oh, one mystery solved. I suppose I can exercise my powers of observation while we wait. This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. My little grey cells did not let me down. My room's along here, 411. In a hotel of this quality? A thief? Come on, come on, don't dawdle. It'll be a disaster if I miss that train. You have locked the door, monsieur? Naturally. This is a foreign country. You have the key card? Of course. We will enter. The lock has not been tampered with. A perfume bottle, empty, suggestive. This earring, it is not the first time I've seen it. traces of soap. The water is scented. A 
The wallet is somewhat worn. It contains just over $200 and the usual cards. Hmm, a fact sheet from a tour of Saint Sophia. A stamped reservation for the Bosphorus Ferry. A stamped reservation for the Bosphorus A brochure for this fascinating city. Another golden moustache to treasure. A conspicuous gallantry cross for meritorious service in Iraq, yet he only retired as a captain. A list of travel expenses, but how did these papers end up on the floor? The bed is skillfully made. Come to Poirot, my exquisitely sculpted friend. Four floors. It's impossible for a thief to have exited through the window. Et voilà. The room is apparently empty. I will leave it for the moment. Go away, please. A brief word, sir. I will give you two brief words. Go away. Monsieur... I've been traveling all night from New York. Must I call the management? Pardon, monsieur. I do not believe we have awakened a thief. Thank you.
The bed is very neatly made, but the corners are not military style. The price we paid for this hotel? I'm not going to make my own bloody bed. Interesting pronoun, that. We. Did you leave the window open? No. That must be how the thief escaped. I think not. Unless the thief had wings. How long were you at breakfast, Captain? A half an hour or so. Just a roll and some coffee. Why was there an earring in your room? An earring? A previous guest, I suspect. I don't wear them. I'm not right this time. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. No, 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 not good. probably blew the papers on the floor as it came in through the window. Moreover, the door is closed, and I found an earring on the bedside table. The captain invited a woman into his room. Maybe she is our culprit. That was easy. Choose to go this way. No, 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 not good. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Captain Arbuthnot, I have examined your room. Much was revealed, possibly more than you expected. Rest assured, we will soon find your ticket. It's about bloody time. I have a train to catch. As do I. You are traveling on the Orient Express? We. Oui. If you will be good enough to answer a few questions, we may both make our train. Ask away. Please give me an account of your movements yesterday. I spent most of my day in Istanbul, sightseeing. I returned to the hotel as the sun was setting. The desk clerk can confirm I was alone when I picked up my key. I spent the night alone. I had no visitors in my room. Have you told me the entire truth, Captain Arbuthnot? Of course. I want you to find my ticket. Can you explain the earring I found on the bedside table? An earring? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Poirot. I had some business correspondence that wanted answering. The hotel provides help for business travelers. They sent up a secretary. I dictated a letter, and she mailed it for me. I hadn't noticed that she had lost an earring. And when did you invite this uh, secretary? This woman may be the thief we are looking for. 
That was yesterday evening. My ticket was still there when I went down to breakfast. She can't have taken it. Hmm, I see. Never mind. It is easily checked. And uh, there was no other person in your room? No, I swear there wasn't. Ah, uh, well, never mind. If it is not her, there is only one option left. Fine. Please finish your job quickly. I'll be downstairs in the lobby. Pardon, monsieur. May I inquire when the staff begins cleaning the rooms? Every morning at breakfast time, sir. After making certain there are no guests in the room, of course. May I speak with the chambermaid who cleaned room 411 this morning? I hope you don't think that one of our staff stole the ticket. No, 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 no. Do not distress yourself. We seek only information. I will summon her at once. I'd ask her to bring her laundry cart. Do not be frightened, mademoiselle. Did you clean room 411 this morning? Room 411? Yes, that is one of mine. Did you see a ticket on the desk when you entered the room? I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice a ticket. There was a wallet, but of course I did not touch it. Did you open the window? Yes, we always air the rooms. Oh, but I forgot to close the window. While I was making the bed, the person from next door was pounding on the wall. I wondered if he needed assistance. I tossed the dirty sheets in my cart, quickly finished mopping and went to see, but it was nothing. I'm afraid I left the window open. I'm so sorry. The window left open, papers scattered on the floor. The chambermaid cleaning the room. I believe I can now visualize what happened. Admit I'm not right this time. Thank you. 
not think that's the right answer. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. No, 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 not good. That was easy. The Hotel Turcatlean is a perfect prelude for my journey. Mademoiselle, would you be so kind as to look in the sheets from room 411? And so the missing train ticket completes its strange journey. An open window, a laundry cart, and an annoying neighbor. But chance is the only guilty party in this dark mystery. Mr. Poirot, I apologize. I believe my concern got the better of me, and I forgot myself. Thank you. It was a case of great magnitude. I'm glad I was up to the challenge. And that, I think, is that. Our bags are all packed. I have my ticket and papers. If you give me yours, I'll hang on to mine. But as your secretary... As my secretary, you see to the bags, Hector. Yes. Yes, sir. That man, I have a curious impression of him. As if I were observing a wild animal, uncaged. We must leave for the station. Our bags are in the taxi. Did you find the ticket? It was a case most difficult, but somehow Hercule Poirot managed. I knew you could do it. Now we can sit back and enjoy a relaxing train ride.
You are in luck, Poirot. Of course, no journey on this train is ever ordinary. But this is a special occasion. To celebrate the 140 years of the Orient Express, the engine will be none other than the splendid Pacific 231G558. There she is, Poirot. The most celebrated train in history. <laughs> my eyes fill with tears of pride. It is time we were aboard, my friend. Follow me. The wagon lit conductor, Pierre Michel, will direct you to your compartment. Lead the way, book. It was built in France in 1922 by the Compagnie Batignolles Châtillon. At the time of its purchase by the SNCF in 1938, it could reach speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Wait until you see. It is like traveling back in time. Today, the train is limited to 100 kilometers per hour. I assure you, that will be more than fast enough to get you to Paris in time for your connection to London. In the meantime, you will bask in the magic that is the Orient Express. Good evening, monsieur. Your compartment is number 202. However, I am afraid that all the others are already full. Full? But how can that be? It is incredible, monsieur. All the world elects to travel tonight. All the same, you must find room for this gentleman here. I can exercise my powers of observation while they try to find me a bed. He is a friend of mine. He can have number 201. It is taken, monsieur. What? Number 201? Yes, monsieur. We are full. Darling, we have to get aboard. I know, I know. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying, but fear of trains? Now you're making fun of me. Never mind. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. Why did you order so much lobster, Hotaru? My dear Freya, I need it for my specialty on the second night. And if the lobster a la mori isn't fresh, the passengers will know. We don't have enough space for my desserts. Tonight, molten chocolate cake. Tomorrow, my specialty. That is not my concern. They will not have room for them anyway. Serve your lobster tonight. Chicken a la mori must be the first night dish for the travelers. It is easier to digest. Ugh, you really are the egomaniac everyone says you are. I have every reason to be. I am the engine. You are just the caboose. Notice the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself. Is everything aboard the train, Hector? In your compartment, Mr. Ratchet. I'm having them disinfect the room again, as you instructed. I also got a call from the Indians. The sale is going through as you expected. There was never any doubt. No other phone calls, Hector, from Geneva or Venice? No, sir. Who were you expecting? Never you mind. Check our tickets. We're not going in until everything is confirmed. The young man seems quite agreeable, but the other... The older man is something quite different. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Well, I am mortified. The 140th anniversary, perhaps, but such a plague of passengers! Adequate. Brilliant. 
well done. No, 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 not good. Notice the young... I do not think that's the right answer. Notice the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend. Right. Et voilà. Poirot, we have a solution. A gentleman has not yet come. An Englishman, a Monsieur Harris. A name of good omen. It is already time to leave. What do I care for, Mr. Harris? As Monsieur pleases. I had your things sent straight to your compartment. Unfortunately, you will be with another traveler. No. Only for the first night. It cannot be helped. I will survive, mon ami. Monsieur Book, we can't find enough space in the kitchen refrigerator to store all of my ingredients. How is it possible? His recipes are extravagant. We need to leave something on the platform. If my lobsters don't go, I don't go. And have the passengers of the Orient Express go hungry? Never! Must I intervene? The problem is unworthy of power. But I do not intend to starve on the most luxurious train in the world. Thank you for coming to help us. It is impossible to fit everything into the Gary's refrigerator. Obviously, my entree are more important than dessert. If Mr. Mori delays his lobsters for a day or two, we can restock at another station. Delay? You ask me to delay? Prea? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm sure we can find a solution. Is that a diagram of the refrigerator? May I see it? Yes. He refuses to look at it. That was easy. Et voilà. You saved tomorrow night dinner. Mr. Paul, I will reserve the finest lobster just for you. I look forward to it, monsieur. And to the dessert, mademoiselle. Hopefully. That will be the last mystery you face on our journey, my dear Poirot. Your compartment for tonight, Omi, is at the back of the second-class carriage, number 102. Tomorrow, you move to a private compartment. Welcome, Monsieur Parot. I apologize for the delay. Thank you, Monsieur Michel. I am delighted you could accommodate me. Wrong compartment. I need to find number 102. These first-class rooms are very spacious and luxurious. Wrong compartment. I need to find... Pardon me? Oh, my apologies. Wrong compartment. 
I need to find number 102. This lady has a style of her own, eccentric but chic. Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. You are Mr. Harris? No, my name is McQueen. I... There is no other berth on the train, monsieur. All is arranged. Yours is the upper berth. We start in one minute. The train's remarkably full. En voiture! Listen, sir, if you'd rather have the lower berth, easier and all that, well, that's all right by me. No, 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 you are too amiable. It is for one night only at Belgrade. Oh, I see. You're getting out of Belgrade. Not exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. You may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Excuse me, Monsieur. Pierre asked me to inform you that a passenger left us, so his room is yours. Monsieur Book instructed that your things be transferred to room 202 during dinner. You will be more comfortable in first class. It is true what you say. Thank you, uh... Mr. Fouché, Monsieur. What is your position on the Orient Express? I manage the bar car, and I also do the restaurant car service. Well, then do not let me keep you. Lobster tonight, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Where will my new compartment be? Room 202 is at the far end of the previous car. I see. Thank you. I'll leave you to it, then. See you soon, monsieur. Please, my friend, join me. I have taken the liberty of ordering you your lobster. Thank you. It appears our fellow passengers are all gathered here again tonight. Ah. If I had but the pen of a Balzac, I would depict the scene. Oh, it is an idea, that. Ah, you agree. It has not been done, I think, and yet... It lends itself to romance, my friend. 
All around us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. For three days, these people, the strangers to one another, are brought together. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from each other. At the end of the journey, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. Certainly it interests us, inviting us to watch and wonder about their lives. Ah, I know you, my friend. Even now, your mind, it is at work. Let us test it. For example, what do you make of those two? Mamma mia, you can feel the power of engine. We climb into the mountains with ease. I know something about the power, and this baby has it in spades. There's something special about a train. I'll give you that. I sell toys, and model trains are one of our biggest items. And not just for children, either. You sell model cars, too? Sure, but give me a train any day. Oh, my friend. What do you have against the cars? Now, I work at Fortuna in Italy as a spokesperson. We are producing the next generation of electric cars, the Fortuna Firenze. Like the city, it is beautiful. We got the competitors looking over their shoulders so much, they're going to hit something. Didn't mean to be insulting. It's just that there's something magical about a train. Not good. My little gray cells did not let me down. The loud gentleman is very confident, a master of his own fate. It is as much in the inflection as it is in the words. He believes in winning, also that he is the one who will win. You are a magician. Oh, it is not a parlor trick, my friend. It is simply observation. I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. And you, uh, Miss Debenham, was it? Where do you hail from? I was born in the U.K. Oh, that's in England, isn't it? What do you do for a living? I teach English to children in other countries. I see. Oh, I wish I spoke a foreign language. My daughter speaks several languages. Let me tell you about her work. It's very important. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. There is much you can learn about someone just by observing them and listening. For example, that lady is reserved. She reveals little. She is self-contained. Some secret prompts her to allow her dinner companion to carry the conversation. I confess, in this case, what I witnessed in Istanbul suggests more. But I will respect her privacy. You will always amaze me. My friend, this is one of the best desserts I have ever eaten. You have always had the sweet tooth. But this, this, it is a masterpiece. I can't understand how the dessert can be so good. I would love to know what the recipe is. Mm. 
I couldn't tell what flavor the ice cream is. It looks like lemon. Look at the zest. Yes. I wasn't sure what that was. W what is the red fruit? Uh, it's probably strawberries. Look. Oh, you think? The biscuit is the foundation of the dessert. All else is built upon it. What do you think? It looks like crushed biscuits, my friend. Finally observed, indeed. Poirot, I am embarrassed to ask you a great favor. My friend, I am on this train due to the great favor you have done me. How may I assist you? This dessert is sublime. If only I had the recipe. Unfortunately, the pastry chef, Miss Nielsen, she will guard her secrets. But you, my friend, I am sure you could make her confess. You wish me to persuade the pastry chef to give up her recipe? You who are the expert at interrogation. Book, it is a dessert. It is the pinnacle of desserts. You, my friend, who, as you say, are on this train. I blush to remind you. Fine, you win. Again, what wouldn't I do for you, my friend? Oh, thank you, Poirot. Good luck.